Oh my god, I love sighing. Hi everybody, welcome to the School of Life with Sony. I should say welcome back. Yo, uh, the school was on recess. You know, the school was on a break. Unfortunately, this break wasn't announced because, you know, in the School of Life, sometimes we take breaks that we don't even expect. You know, breaks just come. You know, you're forced to take a break. You're, you're forced to... Um, to have a break you know so the school went on midterm um actually this wasn't this wasn't even midterm this was like a long 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 holiday a long holiday but i'm back and i did not want to start the new year uh without being done with this with this part of my life really 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 I just didn't want to come to the end of this year and start saying, you see, last year, you know, last year, I just didn't want to do that. I really wanted to be done um, this year and, um, and and start on a very clean, clean slate or clean note um, come 2024. So um, why was the school of life on break? Why did I take such a long, um, a long leave? I'm going to be telling you that in a bit. But first, please like, subscribe, follow, is it for this, for follow, and press on the notification button so that you can be um, getting um, videos whenever I post them. So um, I was reading this book called uh, Courage to be Disliked. And the book Courage to, to be Disliked is actually talking about um, how to achieve happiness and I was like okay so how to achieve happiness has everything to do with um, having courage to be um, to be disliked and I was like not just courage to be disliked or selling my friend for me it is courage to look crazy courage to look vengeful courage to look um, bitter courage courage to look so many things but then I I for my happiness I have to take this route for my um, for my purpose and for my destiny and for I I I I know I mean I know uh, what God wants me to do in my pain and with my pain and um, in my experiences and so um, actually in the book um, they, they they talk about um, how seeking people's approval and how um, how other people's thoughts about you and perception and seeking um, like other people's opinion, how it can derail you and it can make you lose your happiness or not even attain your happiness. So here I am pursuing my happiness. So I had rushed and I had done, I had started having um, a conversation with um not a, a conversation, but conversations. And I did one conversation that was like really, really profound. And I did a conversation with my friend. Um, God is not the man that hurt you. And I think one of the best responses I got was from uh, from two people at least uh, who said, you know what? I really, really, really was done with God. But I'm so happy that um, I've been able to go to church. One person actually told me I haven't gone to church in four years. But after I listened to this video, I was like, you know what? God is not the man that hurt me. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go back to church. I mean, important, go back to church. But most importantly, go back to God. So um, uh, I was, I was excited because uh, even, even Christ would leave the 99 ship for one. So if I do this video just for one person to be delivered, just for one person to understand what they are going through or to gain insight into their experiences, then that's enough. You know, I don't need anything else. That's enough for this one person. That person might be you. That person might be your friend. That person might be a sibling. And that person might be a person that you don't even know right now. Yeah. So going back to why I went on break. So I went on break because I needed it. I went on break because um, I needed to take care of myself. And while on my break, I did a few things. I restarted, you know, I had, I had put a post on therapy for a while, but I went back for therapy. And I've done therapy for now, it's eight weeks. That, that's what I'm thinking. It must be about two months because um, I think I do, I, I do therapy on Monday. And I think tomorrow is going to be my eighth, uh, tomorrow, Monday, is going to be my eighth um, 
tomorrow monday being what date is it tomorrow is gonna be 11th of december so it's gonna be i think my eighth session since i went back to therapy like i, I think i honestly think that we should i mean we should always have someone to talk to therapy is just like having someone to process your thoughts with just having someone to talk to you know like i'm a therapist myself and i i mean like i've been uh, you know I, I i preach of therapy not not you coming to me but you going for therapy i have my clients and i'm also a client to someone but the the i mean like what therapy does to you honestly <laughs> i know christians will say oh the bible will do it for you prayers will do it for you oh fast i mean god god will do it for you that is true but trust me i have seen people who are prayerful i have seen people who fast i've seen people who read the bible i have seen people who <laughs> who know the word of god like they are walking bibles but emotionally they are zero emotional intelligence zero like mentally they are zero you cannot tell me that the bible is gonna fix you the bible is <laughs> I mean, I don't sound like the Bible is going to fix you. I mean, I would not do anything without God. I would not do anything without the Bible. And I mean, it's not just therapy for me. It's um, it's a holistic approach. Let me say that. It's a holistic approach. So I cannot over overemphasize the, the, the importance of therapy, especially when you have a lot of um, issues that you haven't dealt with. Don't just wait for things to, to just like disappear. You know, you're not a magician anyway so i went back to therapy so mondays i do therapy um so i'm talking about my self-care and um wednesdays i do a growth group so mondays at one i do therapy 1 p.m or at 1 p.m on on wednesdays i i do a, a group um called growth group on thursdays i joined i joined let me show you i have this because i want to show you i joined this class this class is called divorce care so i started divorce care and um this is because i finally 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 filed for divorce so i've been like it's been i mean ambivalent we've we just been there like like just there not knowing and i really you know you just want clarity and you want to move on knowing okay now let me say my ex as, as opposed to saying i don't know i mean like i don't even know what to call someone because you don't even have clarity but i really i really thank god and i'm so happy that uh before the year 2023 ends uh or yeah or before we come to the to the end of the year i mean i've there's that one one major 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 decision on one that one major step that i've taken um towards my um i'll say my wellness and my and my freedom and his freedom as well you know so i joined divorce care um so i filed for divorce in august 13th and um august 13th is when i filed for divorce and i actually that's what i did the video i did uh, i did the video after that but after that i could not continue not because of that but because of something else that i'm gonna be telling you so i'm gonna tell you briefly like what made me um what made me a file for divorce and f have the freedom and f finally like filing you guys like um it's not easy to to walk out of a marriage i'm gonna just say that like walk out of a marriage of course i didn't walk out of my marriage but i'm not i'm, I'm just I'm, I'm gonna say that or what are the i don't know what what i don't know the best words to use um it's it, it's not easy for a marriage to come to an end and after about 18 years and um I, I'm, I, like where you've like walked down the aisle and you've you have children and everything and you know it's it's not it's not a it's not a it's, it's not a walk in the park you know and i keep telling i keep telling my friends i'm like please try everything do everything you guys go for therapy i think i've said that before you guys do everything that you can do everything that you can to save your marriage i am pro marriage like 110 percent 110 percent and i think i have i mean i have a lot of lessons and a lot of teachings that i can i mean i have i have learned so 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 much during the marriage and in, in this uh in this like separation uh process and uh if you if your life is not at risk if you're 
emotional, mental, spiritual wellness is not at risk. I don't know what that means. By all, by all means, strive. Strive to make your marriage work, you know. Strive to make your marriage work. So, um, so what happened is um, August 13th, August 13th, I, I just called my, my lawyer um, and I was like, you know what? File for divorce. And I think I called at about, um, about 3 a.m. And so this is what happened. I filed for divorce just when I had said yes to reconciliation. Yeah, that's very tricky. Um, for three years, uh, we've been separated for, for three years since 2020, um, August 31st. I actually would call it September because it was like the end of August. So it's, it was like, I mean, it's, um, it's September. I just had a date to September. And, um, in all that period, in all that season, fine, there's a way I waited for someone to, for someone to come and say, okay, fine, I realize I, I did this and I shouldn't have done this. Um, there's a way I waited, but it never happened. And um, time went and I mean, a lot of things. And it wasn't it wasn't just a one day thing, I wouldn't say, honestly. It wasn't just the move that you moved without me or that you moved without me knowing where you're moving to or you moved to a house that I did not know. I mean, it was not just about that. It was about uh, so many other things. So I wouldn't even say that is what it was about. Um, so I had never, ever thought of reconciliation i mean i had i mean i was done i was done 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 so this whole this whole season i've been done okay but um in july in july uh we had mediation and i am the one who asked for mediation i am the one who asked for mediation and why i asked for mediation was because um it wasn't mediation for for the relationship but it was mediation for like when you need documents to be signed when you need something to be done like i need to know this is a person i can talk to because it's hard for for you to communicate you know for the both of you to communicate like it's it's so i asked for a mediator because um in 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 june um I'm going to, today I'm going to use the name friend. I'm going to call this person friend because this person recently called me friend. And this is actually the reason why I'm doing this, uh, this video. This is what pushed me to do this video. Like, um, I'm going to, I'm going to be coming to that. Like what was said in, on the pulpit, you know? So, um, my friend, I'm going to call him that because that is what he called me. So my friend, uh, and friend with a pinch of salt, like friend, you know, the, define friendship for me guys define friendship so my friend um my, my my friend um was like always i mean as always like on and off like when i need something i'm gonna be nice to you i'm gonna talk to you then when you do that thing i i i give you silent treatment i pull back when you ask me something i cannot answer when you when you raise something not not like issues between us and i tell you oh um this my daughter needs this not finite not anything financial the last time we spoke i sent you you i sent you a picture of my son i was in hospital and i've sent you a picture of my son in hospital and you want something signed and i tell you okay i'm gonna sign it and um you immediately i do i do it you you don't even respond to my to the to the pictures i've sent you i'm in hospital and let me tell you if you see the pictures of my son and how he looked i don't think anybody can ignore i totally don't think just humanly i don't think you can ignore but i send you i i, I tell you actually as we're talking I'm, I'm at the hospital and um and i'm with my son and um and i send you the pictures and you don't respond and i'm like you know what if if it was i mean like when i'm in, in these situations like you don't come in and i remind you okay there's this time also you okay I'm, I'm always looking for closure you guys i don't know i mean now i'll never look for closure again now i'm done with closure and i i, I mean i found my closure in talking you know because i've always waited to hear not sorry but repentance you know and um so when i do that i um the guy tells me, I'm going to block you for my peace of mind. See, I've just signed your papers. I've just sent you the papers that you want signed. Then you told me I'll block you for my peace of mind. So the next time you stay for a, for a long time, you never even follow up. Like, um, you, you, I mean, that's it. You again want some papers to be signed. Um, then I tell you, you know what? From now, I don't want, I'm not going to do this with you. I need a mediator. 
because I'm tired, because I'm because I'm tired of being disrespected. I just I'm gonna sign whatever you need to be signed. I'm gonna do whatever it is that you need, but I am not going to do it alone. I need a mediator. Then you ignore. Then the next time again, you write and say, "This is what I need," and I tell you, "Hey, this is what I said. I need a mediator. Let's take this through someone else." Because I'm gonna sign for you, and then you're gonna drop me again. You're gonna—I mean, you're gonna like stay off, and no matter what I tell you. Actually, like, let me let me just go back a bit. Like when my son was unwell, he had eczema. Like he had had never seen something like that. Like he looked like scales the whole tummy and his hands, like his his whole torso looked like it was like scale. It was like scaled. Scaled is that English? It 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 looked like it had scales. Anyway, so um. So I, I we we don't talk, and uh, when I tell you mediator, and this is I I you you ask me to sign for you something, and I I'm, I'm quiet because hey I've told you. Then um the next thing you tell me this is now June thirteenth. You tell me June th I'm saying that because I checked. I'm um, not that that I'm like really I'm not I'm, I'm like really remembering. Not that I wouldn't remember, but I'm just saying that because I checked. So you tell me. Hmm, you know what? You're frustrating me. With my right and i'm going to take you to immigration Whew. let me post just right there like who does that like who issues an immigration threat who does that you know you know i that thing shocked me Like how, how evil can your thoughts be to even have such a thing cross your mind? So that means if I was on the wrong with the US laws, then you have the potential to take me to immigration. Well, I'm in America legally. I'm doing everything I'm doing legally. By the grace of God, if I wanted to go to Kenya today, I can go and come back. Just by the grace of God. I am here legally. I am doing everything I'm supposed to be doing legally. My children are legal. I am legal. And at that time, you are legal. Lakini kama kuna mtu akupeleka immigration, hata unajua tu ningekwani wewe. But I cannot even think of anything like that. Even right now I've said that, but it's I just say that with a lot of, you know, I cannot that thing cannot even cross my mind, but it's crossed your mind. So if I was on the wrong, then I tell you, okay, please go. And then you tell me, immigration will go. Then the next morning, then I am shattered. I mean, I cannot believe it. People here in America are told, like, be aware or uh, be very careful with whom you talk to about your, your, your staff. Be careful because people are really bad. But for me, my enemy is right within, like with me. So if this guy had something against me, trust me. So he, he, so this is a threat. I mean, I'm used to threats. I'm used to th to being threatened into doing things or not in, not doing things. Like this is my like this is the life I'm used to. I'm used to. I mean, I'm used to it. But that doesn't mean that I don't hurt just because I'm used to it. And someone's telling me, but you know that is how. But you know how that is how it is. So, but what? I know. But then what? When I tell you about like something like, oh, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't follow up on my son, you'll tell me, oh, how many times do I follow up? Remember the times, we're not talking about that, right now we're in hospital, but you want me to remind you to remember the times that you've taken. I mean, it's, it doesn't make sense to me, you know, anyway. So the, the following morning I wake up and um, now, because I've said, go to immigration, go, please go. Then I find he's sent me my, my the contacts for my school. He's gone on the, on the website and he's looked for the contacts for my school. And he sends me the email, the phone, then the phone. This is to tell me, because I'm bright. I mean, I'm getting what you're saying. You're telling me, you know what? I am actually reporting you to your school. This time, I just act very quickly. I write him because I'm thinking, honestly, if you guy, if you talk to my school, you are going, you're going to be in trouble. You, not me. You, you are going to be into, in, in so much trouble because can you imagine my school calling me and asking, who is this guy sending, uh, I don't know what, what this is. And where is his, this guy? And then I said, I mean, like, who, what is happening? Like, you, I mean, did you come with someone who is, do, do you have issues? Like, I cannot imagine. First of all, my school is for me. I am their student. My school is for me. My school knows me. 
what am I talking about? I don't even have to over explain. My school knows me. You are threatening to take me to school. This is the same school that facilitated my travel to Kenya when you could not allow me to see the kids. When you could not allow me, like you refused to take the kids to take passports. I had to spend $3,000 to come home and take the kids to to get passports. And even those 10 days I came, I only saw my kids for four days. Not allowed. Anyway, let me move on to that. So um, so this is now August. Um, now mediation, we have mediation. So I'm adamant, like we have mediation, but it's not for reconciliation. This mediation is for signing papers and we finish. But of course the, the mediator and especially um, the mediator being like a pastor, he wants to know, so what happens? And we always talk. And for me, I will always talk because, oh my God, these things were just burning. But I really thank God because since I, 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 I spoke, uh, since I, I, I did my story, my voice, whew, I, I cannot even, I, 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 I can never overemphasize um, what that did to me. I mean, that is the healing that I needed, honestly. Um, so I say, no, I do not want anything. I just, this is what I want. And so they listen. And then um, we have mediation again in August, um, maybe around 8th there. Because I remember it's a sign we, we were sitting here with my kids on a Sunday and uh, we were watching a movie and my son says, hey, I asked to watch this movie and I started thinking about him. I said, oh, my God, he watched the movie alone and I started feeling him in a, feeling him like, oh, my God, he's he's where he is alone uh, in a different state. Yeah, um, he's where he is alone. And I started thinking for three years or in three years, this is the time I'm thinking. And I started thinking, what if we reconcile? What if I just like let go of everything and not, I mean, and just like, like reconcile. And that is the time that seed is planted in me. So uh, we have mediation that same week. Like this is on a Sunday. We have mediation, I think on a Tuesday. So long and short of it is in the mediation, I say like, okay, um, so we asked our thoughts. And I say for the first time, I actually give reconciliation a thought. And they are, all of them are like shocked. And I said, yeah, this is what happened. And, and for the first time, I gave reconciliation a thought. And I started thinking, mm, two people in America, life is easier. And then I think that time I was like really, really stressed. I had put a car, it had been here for two months. Yo, I hadn't done driving because I was afraid. People keep, everybody keeps saying, oh, driving in America. And that time, my, like, I, haven't, I, wasn't being, I, I wasn't at my optimum. So I, I wasn't even ready to do, to do my driver's test. So I was like, I have a car here. It's parked here. I'm not driving it. And I'm like, oh, my God. Well, I mean, things would be easier. So these are all the things that were driving me. Be careful what you need when you need, you know. So, um, so I said, okay, yeah, I have been thinking about it. And he was also, like, shocked. Like, wow, okay, interesting. I mean, this is, what I, this is what I also want. Okay, even me, I wouldn't mind reconciliation. And so we have a conversation and I say, these are my non-negotiables. And this time I've started my YouTube channel, but I haven't even like gone, maybe I've done three episodes, not even done like anything like deep. I haven't even, this this is the time I was still saying the other person and I hadn't talked about a lot of stuff. Mm. I, I say like, um, my non-negotiables are number one. I've started giving my story and I am not stopping because no matter what, whether we get back together or not, my story is not changing. My past experiences are not changing. So if you want, you can join me and you you can explain or you can give your side of the story because my story is not changing. Whether we reconcile or not, my story is not changing and my experiences are my experiences and they are what they are. And whatever I say in January is what I'm going to say in December. Whatever I say when I have a... When I have a Middle class people is what I'm going to say when I have high end people. Like my story will not change according. I don't change stories according to eh, who am I talking to. My story is the same. It's constant. The same. The same with me in the middle of the night. And I'm going to tell you the same story. You know, because those are my experiences. So I say I'm, I'm going to change. Like I'm not, I'm not stopping. This is what I'm doing because this is, this is what I want for my healing. So if you want, you can join me. But I'm not stopping. And my other non-negotiable is um, like therapy. And my other non-negotiable as always, like apart from this is the only new one. My only my other non-negotiable is um, accountability partner. Because there's none. Even now, like even now, <laughs> I cannot talk to anyone to talk to you. Or I cannot, I mean like there's no accountability partner. Not a part, not nothing. So I'm like, okay. And um, when I say that, um, 
now he, he again he takes it back and he says he he says you know what um i've actually been thinking of going back to kenya and remarrying and and the mediator who i'm gonna say pastor pastor is like huh just when your wife says that uh, she wants reconciliation this is when you're saying you want to you want to go back to kenya and she says, yeah, no, i'd rather speak my mind this is what i've been thinking i'd rather go back to kenya and remarry or um or get someone here and remarry and and the mediator is like wow and he says yeah this is what i've been thinking this is what i've been and the mediator says no i think you need to pursue your wife he says um he says it's really hard to pursue her okay fine yeah it's hard to pursue me that's fine it's really hard to pursue her i'd rather pursue a new person and then he continues and says oh i am i am i am aging i need to start a family i need and i'm like wow and he's asked you're starting a family and you have a family and it's just confusing like it's so so confusing and i'm not gonna go into the details of um, of other things but that is i mean that is just what i want to communicate i mean there's a, a lot of other things that just leave me so shocked but i'm not gonna go into that um and um we finished the conversation and uh by the end of it i just um they agree okay there's gonna be therapy and all that you're gonna work on this and all that so the first time i said I don't want anything. I, I mean, it's I, I have n I have no interest in this relationship. My friend says, um, no. My, my friend, the last time we f we did the we did the mediation, wrote me a text and said, oh, thank you. And actually, yeah, that thank you. And in July, um, on July seventeenth, he sent me flowers for my birthday, and he said, um, sent flowers and said, I love you. Always on my mind. So this is J July, and then this is August. Then, um. So August, we finished the conversation, the first conversation that is, and he sends me a text, oh, thanks for being in the meeting. So this day I say, okay, fine, we're going to have reconciliation. And I bring up uh, some things and uh, the pastor says, no, don't worry, I'm going to handle him on that. And we finish the conversation. And so I'm expecting, hey, today I've said, okay, fine, let's reconcile. I'm waiting for maybe a text or something. And... I'm waiting to hear, hey, thank you. Oh, wow. You're going to be, I mean, like, so where do you start from? Or, okay, I'm going to be going for therapy. I'm not going to talk to you for a while. I'm going to, something, nothing. I wait that evening, nothing. The following day, nothing. The third day, nothing. So this is 10th, 11th, 12th, nothing. Never heard from him. Just when I said, let's reconcile, never heard from him. 13th, nothing. Yo, I slept. <laughs> this is my bed. I stayed in this bed for four days. Like I was, I was. It's only that I'm, I'm, I'm in very good company. I'm in the company of therapists. I'm in the company. I mean, like, I, God is just so amazing. When I do, I say God goes before me. Not, not God. Not only walks by my, by me, but He walks. He goes before me. And God just knew what I needed at this at, at this particular time. So, um, He doesn't talk. So on thirteenth, I'm like, you know what? This guy is used to playing with me. This, these are the games that I was used to. When I said I want you, you that is when you pursue me. When I, the one now I, I say I, I, I it's, it's okay. Let's let's work on this. You don't pursue me. Then the worst thing is that when you go outside, you're telling my family, oh, I want this girl. Oh, you're telling other people, oh, I'm, I'm pursuing, and this is why I'm doing this because on the pulpit, this guy said, insinuated that he had come to US to pursue me. What he did not say is that um, he did he 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 was not pursuing me. He was focused on remarrying. What he did he wasn't telling my family is how he was treating me on the side. He will do something good. Fine, you're sending money for my daughter's college or for our daughter's college for reasons best known to you and I. But what you're not saying is the other things you're not doing or the is the conversation and the threats you're giving me. You tell, I mean, I, I don't want to go into, into non-issues right now. But the reason why I did this video today is because of what was said on the pulpit. So this guy stands at the pulpit and says, like, insinuates that I'd gone to America, like to pursue. I'm paraphrasing. This, these are not his, his words, but, but I'm paraphrasing to pursue my marriage. Uh, but it failed and I went through a lot of depression because of a lot of, I don't know, a lot of things. This guy took me through depression. Like when, actually when that, that 14th, when that 13th, 13th night, I just woke up and that's when I called the lawyer and I was like, hey, 
your filed for divorce and that's how i filed for divorce not you you, you can't say it's reactional it wasn't an emotional thing because like me saying i'm gonna get back to, with him that was the emotional thing because it happened within i mean you can't compare three years and something that i thought about in three days you know so this was the emotional thing this was the emotional thing and i am so i'm, I'm so grateful because he said oh i listened to her youtube um that time i had that time i had done four episodes i listened to her youtube and that's why um, now this is later i still he's saying and i was like no i'm done i'm done i'm done i don't want to talk to her again and um on the side you're telling me oh i understand oh, you, you've done your youtube uh, and uh, and i mean i now we are draws like he says okay now we are on the same level now you're the way i hurt you is the way you've hurt me and now we're on the same level and we will never ever be on the same level i am dealing with trauma hurting you for for saying what i've gone through is nothing compared to what i have gone through and what i have had to um to sustain in terms of like um of the trauma you know like you nobody knows like the trauma that have been through nobody knows how much my mind like has been affected so anyway um on 24th if 24th is a is is a sunday if it's not then you know i mean between 23rd 24th, i don't i'm not sure either 25th or 24th that sunday that sunday um he said my friend i i met my friend i met god before i met my friend and i decided that pursuing this institution and he says, I don't want to say what institution, who doesn't know it's the institution of marriage. So I am here and people think, oh, you're fighting. Oh, she's fighting. She's, she keeps, but I am fought like when you, when, when you talk on the pulpit or at the pulpit and you have, say your, let me just call them your 500 people who are listening to you and you're there painting me the way you want to paint me or painting yourself the way you want to paint yourself because you want to paint yourself good so that I look bad. It's, it's okay for you to, I mean, I don't, you don't have to paint me bad for you to look good. You can just speak, look good without like having to paint me bad. You know, you don't have to do that. You don't have to, to crush me so that, to step on me and crush me so that you can stand tall. You don't have to. You can just speak and say, give your story and don't even bring me up, you know, because you bring me up fine you've thanked me but you brought me up like oh i went to pursue my um my marriage that is that is what i had that is what i had i went to pursue my marriage but i decided you know this institution is not i mean i'd rather lose this institution than, than lose god and played victim what i would want my friend because he said oh losing my friend what i would want my friend to do is to go back to that pulpit and say exactly what he told me because um, there's something I found out on um, the week of, of September, that September 20th, maybe 18th. I, I don't want to go into details of like how, like I had, I had, God had, God had, had revealed that thing to me in a dream in 2021. But then I confirmed in, in um, that, that week of, uh, of 18th September and it really hurt me. Oh my god that thing destroyed me like that thing was like it was like daggers 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 on my back on my shoulders on my in my heart in everywhere it was so painful then um he knew i i know he knows that i knew right and um i hear he's going back to kenya when i found i find out that he's going back to kenya he, he was gonna go without telling me this is not the first time there's another time he wanted to do that and i i i know he's he told people that i stopped him i did not stop him i just like told him like you've been given an opportunity if you're going back make sure you follow the right channel so that you're able to come to america whenever you want because for me i'm thinking okay it's it's good when when you can when you can be when you are able to access here and the kids are here or when your kids need you can be able to come and i i, I like just gave him the like the protocol like this is what you need and it's it's nothing big it's just having me take your papers to get signed and i mean just simple but you don't want to do that you want to i feel like you want to waste what god has given you and that was all i said and i gave him i sent him to like um that link of like uh what 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 you should do before you travel but anyway so um so in church like um um no no when when i find out that he's leaving i that is a week i am so 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 broken Actually, the very, very day I hear that uh, someone, someone, someone close to me calls me and says, oh, I, he's, I mean, I, he's, he's also so stressed and I hear that he's going, he's going back to Kenya. And I'm like, I put all my pain down. I'm the offended one. I'm the one that is really, really hurt, really, 
heart beyond heart, yo. Heart beyond heart. Heart beyond heart. And I just tell my friends, please call him and tell him to come and see the kids before he goes back. And I had made it so open. I had said, you know, you can come here anytime you want to come and, and see the kids. You can, you can, I mean, this house is open. You, I treated you very well in December. Despite you kicking me out of the house, uh, of your house, the last time I was, I was with you, like the last, the last encounter, like at your house, you kicked me out. And not just kicking me out, but you are, you sent someone a message bragging how you've kicked me out. But that time I did not know that you had a serious relationship. That was me. So that time I did, I wasn't aware. Yeah. But I, I and I, and I, and what I said is I'm, I'm sure that, um, the person you are sending this message was your girlfriend and your best friend two people or at least your girlfriend or the two of them you know and um i'm gonna pin that i'm gonna pin that i'm gonna pin that message here like um the day this guy dragged me out of the, of his house the last time I, I like the last time we had like that interaction as soon as he kicked me out he sent me that message instead of the person that he was sending I sent it back, and his response was, I cannot stand you. Should I say that when I walked in, he was reading the Bible and had come from an overnight prayer meeting or a Kesha? And apparently, I was one of the prayer <laughs> items. Pray for reconciliation between my wife and I. How do I know? Uh, his associate pastor happened to pass by my house and um, told me how much they were praying for me and how they had prayed um, the previous night for the reconciliation and they were fasting and praying. And I asked with who? And he said, all of us have been praying. And I was like, just cut that. This is what this person did. And the associate pastor said, no, it's not true. I showed him the message and he said, no, this cannot be from him. Ah, that was the last I had from him. So the next time you come to my house, I, I treat you very well. Not different from how I used to treat, to treat you. And then I, I make it open. But the next time you want to come to, come to my house, you want to come by force. Again, it's, it's, it's that time of, uh, like of mediation, like... They had refused at that time I had he had refused to get a mediator and he, he tells me I'm coming and I'm like um I told you to get a mediator and then he he writes me Wednesday 6 30 p.m. and I'm like you're ignoring he says I'm coming and I've booked my flight then I'm saying you're ignoring what I said I need you to get a mediator I don't have a problem with you coming I don't have a problem with you. and he'd say he says Wednesday 6 30 p.m. and I'm like you know what this time and and i say you know what i'm going to report you to the authorities if you if you try because again i'm trying to assert my boundaries i'm trying to communicate you know i'm not that girl that you used to do stuff to anyway go back to this day i so go back to september 2021 so i say you know what um my friends i i tell my friend my friends call this person and ask him to come and see the kids before he leaves so the first time you you've seen your kids is december when you came together the second time is when you came for your for um the document you wanted and then the third time was now when you came when i asked you to come so those are three three times okay um so i've told you to come and then you come and um the time you came now is that is now when i went for therapy you people now this is September 22nd and I'm not going to say what like everything that I was told but this is one of the things that took me to therapy. So this guy told me, um, um, listen and I want this to be clear, I have no problem that you are in a relationship. My only problem is when you stand at the pulpit and you do not say the truth. So what I expected or what I would have hoped for you to say that day you preached on 24th when you went back to Kenya, you should have said, you know what? The time my wife was ready for reconciliation, I was not ready for reconciliation. I was tired of her. I did not want the stories she was giving on YouTube and I, I, I did not want her and I was just done. And actually, like, me pursuing her all that time, in, I mean, no, I mean, like, 
I wasn't even sure. Like lying that you pursued me and not even saying the truth is what is making me talk right now. So this guy told me so many things that I'm not going to say. <laughs> that is between him and his God. But the one thing he told me is he has been in a six months into our breakup. He got into a serious relationship and he actually said he cemented it. I'm going to use the word cemented. Cemented it in March 2021. That is when he cem this relationship was cemented. And he said... I knew I, I knew the girl, like I know the girl. And he said, I have been in a relationship with this girl for this long. And even right now she knows I'm here. And she feels bad that I'm here. So he wants me to feel honored that he's gone against the girlfriend. And even the two times we have mediation, she was aware. And I, I, I fell in love with her. So honey, you're loved. Um, I fell in love with her and I pursued her. He used the same word and I pursued her. And he told me, I'm giving you 90 days. Like you decide if you want to come back. If you come back, I'm going to leave her. I mean, I'm not, I'm going to end it. You are my first love, but I am going to end it. Like, um, yeah. And he told me a lot of stuff. And um, he said, he said, I don't want to waste her time. I've been with her for two and a half years. I don't want to waste her time. And Disclaimer, I don't even think um, it's been two and a half years. Not I don't think it's not been two and a half years. I said, um, let me not go there. Let, let me not, not go there. So um, she, he said, I don't want to waste her time. So you're talking to your wife like you're talking to, okay, your wife just because you're not divorced, not wife because. And he said, I have been with her for this long and I don't want to hurt her. I don't want to waste her time. She's this age going to this age she wants to start having children i'm this age and when am i gonna start having children so i'm asking you right now like you can agree for us to get back together and you're gonna be together and we can make this work and um i just watched looked at this guy tell me stuff and stuff other stuff that i will not mention but anyway my point is this you were in a relationship you um carelessly carelessly told me stuff that you are not supposed to tell me how you care about someone else and not wasting their time 18 20 years with you but you're telling me how you don't want to waste someone's time two and a half years the, the things i was remembering the things that made me like heart heart and feel so disrespected were, um like this this words like the first was, oh, this lady um, is, um, yeah, he, he said, uh, I love her because even right now she knows I'm here. And even the, the two times we had mediation, she knew that we were having mediation and she was feeling bad, you know, I mean, and of course you can expect she's a lady at the end of the day and she has feelings. And I'm thinking, okay, that time I wasn't thinking. I just listened. And, but I love her because she's given me a window for you. And he actually did that. I love her because she's given me a window for you. So when this guy left, now everything just like my mind, my heart, my everything was beating in a different way. I was like, what level of disrespect is this? Like how much does someone disrespect me? To tell me how someone else is feeling bad, how, how someone else is a lady, how... He cares, he cares about someone else and doesn't want to hurt that person. And I was like, you know what? This is disrespectful. You know, you're not even telling me to tell me I am so sorry. This is what I did. Not sorry because you're in a relationship, but sorry because you're claiming you want us, you want us to be back together and you want us to work this. So you're not telling me because you're feeling like remorse. You're telling me to again threaten me into getting back into a relationship with you. Hot cake you know i fainted i collapsed at 9 30 when he left i collapsed again at one and i collapsed again at 6 30 like that is when I, I went for therapy not i think just my body was just so shocked my body was in shock and um i thank god again i feel like my youtube video saved me because can you imagine if i went back can you imagine if i had gone back like to to my previous life like 
nobody can tell me um that oh god is gonna punish you you know first of all i don't talk about um someone's office i talk about a person so whatever office you're in whether you're a banker or whatever i don't care that is your office i talk about my experiences so nobody can come and tell me oh god god is never gonna punish me god has been so good to me god has been so kind to me and god is with me even in this journey same pattern ghosted me in august and in september the same person that was going back home without informing me suddenly wants me back i should ignore that there's a wife in waiting the woman someone passionately fell in love with and pursued i should snap out of that and be the other woman right and true to the lies in one day the same person testing my boundaries with fake love and reconciliation messages justifies himself and plays victim. The opening words are, the devil is the accuser of brethren and accuses him day and night. This, I believe, is in reference to the experiences I have shared. On the same day, he is back with his wife in waiting and pictures are flaunted. What if I fell for the hoover? What if I believed in the lies? The old vulnerable me would have said, It's okay, I'll let go and cover you. A statement I've used in the past. Silence in my 20s and 30s did me no good. My masking was also masking and enabling someone else. Over the years of my talking, from using parables to being explicit, People have wanted me to stop, but nobody has stopped the other person from continually traumatizing me. On the contrary, the other person has been enabled, supported, tolerated, and celebrated, to say the least. In my 40s, I will not keep the toxin injected in me. This is how I get rid of it. I will not be used as a cover, not anymore. I have worked so hard for my healing, thanks to God. So many women are in this space with no one to stand up for them or with them. Worse, nobody believes them. I am willing to be a martyr. I don't want to be believed or supported. The just God that sees in secret has my back, has had my back, and will always have my back. The one that held me in dark nights and continues to is for me and with me. I have a dream that one day this ugly covered thing that has destroyed so many will be known. I have a dream that this ugly thing that destroys victims while the perpetrators go free will be discovered and uncovered. This is my dream. I love you and God bless you so much.